Aloha. This is Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of the certified car nut. Are you ready for some Mustang madness? Well, I hope so, because we've traveled all the way to Kailua, Hawaii, for the Mustang Madness at All Ford Show. Now, most people wouldn't think of Hawaii when they think of car shows, but you'd be amazed at how many nice cars there are on these islands. As you might expect, most of them are pretty low mileage. Joining me now is Daryl Yamani, coordinator Hi. of this event. Daryl, welcome to the show. Nice to meet you. Daryl, this, this is a great place for a car show, but I'm another one of those guys that doesn't think of Hawaii in car shows. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of cars here? We have a lot of cars here. Our club has about 150 members. How old the club is it? It started in 1979. So it's a pretty old club too. Right, yes. And is it a, is it a Mustang club? Is it a Ford club? Uh, it's a Mustang Shelby Cup. Now, I mean, I usually ask, well, how far do people drive to get here? But I guess they didn't really drive too far. You don't drive into the show, do you? Yeah, it's about a 10, 20 minute ride. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you got this many cars in a 10 to 20 minute uh, radius, yeah. that's not bad. Now, I mean, you got a Mustang or two yes. in your family, don't you? Yeah, we have three in our family. Now, you know, I know you're a coordinator of this show, but I've kind of heard that it's your wife Donna that pushes you and then you push everybody else. Is that true? That's true. <laughs> she backs me up. <laughs> Well, that's great. I want to get around and check out all these great cars. Looks like a beautiful day. So, hey, thanks Thank a you. lot for having us here. Thank you very much. All right. The Aloha Mustang and Shelby Club of Hawaii puts on the Mustang Madness and All Ford Show each year. There might not be many roads on these islands, but there sure are a lot of nice Fords here. Charlie, this is one trick truck. 56 F100? Yes, sir. Not a stock color, though. No, it's not. It's a, it's a Ford color. Is it? A 95 Ford color. What do they call it's it? It's called Pink Coral. Oh, well, you know, it goes great with the Aloha State plate, you know? Oh, <laughs> thank you. I like the louvered uh, tailgate. And what's your bed? That doesn't look stock either. No, that's uh, teak wood that we made. You got some of that around here, don't yes, you? Yes, sir. What'd you do in the interior? Pretty, uh, did you trick it up or is it pretty stock? Uh, we kept it pretty stock with the bench seat. Yeah? Yes. Kind of went with a little velour feel. Yes, sir. That's nice. It's, it's just, it's beautiful. It really pops. Now, what do you got under the hood? Well, I mean, what's under there? We got a Ford 351 Cleveland. All right. Well, I love how it opens. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, was that a crate engine or did you pull it out of something? No, we pulled it out of a 74 Ranchero. Oh, that looks great. Uh, have, you, have you worked it up any? It looks like it's got some uh, toys on it. Oh, uh, put a high-tech distributor. Got a Barry Grant carburetor on there. Pretty hot? Pretty good. Pretty good. Do you drive it? Yes, sir. Well, daily I, driver. Daily driver. I love it. You know, a Ford in your Ford. I love that. Oh, nice work, you. man. Thank you. <laughs> well, Victor, I know this is a Mustang show, but <laughs> this doesn't look like a Mustang to me. No, this is the uh, predecessor of the Mustang. You might say the grandfather of the Mustang. This, what, a 1914? Uh, this is a 1914 Model T Ford. Touring car, right? Touring car, that's this, great. It's just beautiful, and, and you've had it for quite a while. I've, I've had this car, believe it or not, since I was 19 years old, and I'm 67, and I still have it. So that's 48, 48 years, years. I've owned this car. It's just, well, I see it's, it's, it's even, you can get the home light burning here. Yeah, these are uh, kerosene lamps. They burn kerosene, and the headlights over here burn acetylene gas, just like a welding torch. So uh, powering, it's a four-cylinder? Four-cylinder engine. And, and about how many horse? It's about 20 horsepower. That's great. Now. Uh, the interior is, you know, pretty austere very, too. Very, very stark, very austere. Uh, just everything was very functional, utilitarian. And uh, these are really quite a challenge to drive. Uh, yes, they are because you shift them with these foot pedals. Uh huh. Yeah, reverse is in the center, low gear and higher there, and this is the brake. So it's almost opposite of how you drive a car today. Yes, yes. Now, yeah. you drive this car very much? I or? drive it once in a while. I drive it to the show here. I drive it around Kailua once in a while. It's just a show car. It's not for transportation. Well, it's a great addition to this show, and I love the fact that it's sandwiched between a couple Panteras. I mean, yeah. it's just, <laughs> it's very appropriate. It's all in the short. <laughs> so, John, uh, you brought some toys, didn't you? Yeah, we brought our two most requested cars from uh, you know, the Mustang clubs around the country that throw these shows. These tend to be the two most requested. Uh, the Boss obviously is requested because it's the most awesome Mustang around. And this one here is just a real neat trick piece. Now what all you, I mean, this is your mod motor, isn't it? Yeah, this is, the, this is a 5.4 liter. And uh, the purpose of this car originally was a few years back when everybody was getting concerned about the more stringent emission standards and fuel economy standards, uh, they were worried, uh, is performance going to go away? And this car here has uh, what we call the flex fuel technology. Mm -hmm. It runs on alcohol or gasoline, and it uh, meets all the uh, emission standards in the future, and it makes 600 horsepower to boot. So Gee, you know what? That's pretty nice. Well, it's a nice combination. You, know, you don't have to give up anything. <laughs> well, and then, and then you dropped a, a classic 429 in a 94 Mustang. 
uh, I, I'm, I'm astounded at that. And I saw on the on the card that thing does zero to sixty in one point nine seconds. Very nicely too. Wow. How do you keep the rubber on the road? Uh, the car the car has got a lot of uh, uh, lit engineering into it, uh, rear end and the suspension work, and uh, you know she'll go zero to hundred and back to zero in eleven three. That's uh, that's almost 427 Cobra. That's better than 427. That's four, that's two that seconds faster. 13 six, I yeah, think, or 13 two. Seconds faster, yeah. That's pre that's pretty pretty nice. So this must have been a tough gig for you, you know, coming over to Hawaii, bringing a couple toys, you know. Well, you know, I had to leave Michigan. The weather's freezing right now. I could have been scraping ice off the windshield. Yeah, but, you yeah. know, I gave all that up for this. You're, you're, but you know, you're that kind of guy. I'm just that kind of guy. <laughs> hey, John, great seeing you. Always my, a pleasure, man. My pleasure. Keep yeah. building these toys. And you keep doing a good job in your show too. I, I'll do my best. Welcome back to My Classic Car and the Mustang Madness and All Ford Show. You know, I've always heard stories about these guys that have these killer garages. We were up in Winnipeg and got, got wind of a couple of them, so I thought I'd stop by and see if the stories were really true. I hope this is the right place. Hello? That's a good sign. Uh, hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Dennis, Jerry Gray. Well, nice to meet you, Jerry. Uh, I hear you got this, this great garage. You wouldn't mind if I came in and pulled around. I'd love to have you see it. Oh, Jerry, I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. I like it too. <laughs> Pretty spiffy for a garage. You know, you've got some fabulous cars in here. I'm a big fan of Jaguars anyway. The E-Type, I love them. Both, you got a coupe and a Roadster. Two, two Series 3s. Very nice. Match set almost. And yes. Then, and uh, a couple 150s, right? A 150S. 150s's. Yes. So you got a fixed head coupe and a and a uh, roadster. That's right. But but wow, what a place! I mean, what 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 motivated you to do this? Well, when we built the house about 15 years ago, I spent all my time down here working my cars, and I thought, why shouldn't my garage look as nice as the rest of the house? So about five years ago, I started fixing it up and putting the lighting, which is very important for having a good garage. Redid the walls, put all my Jaguar memorabilia. Well, yeah, you got to have the memorabilia on the walls and put the lights in a spot where they make the cars look very good. Well, yeah, they're not just uh, randomly pointed, are they? No, and it's very important to have halogen lights, too, because fluorescent lights just kill the finish of a car. But now, this isn't just your showroom. You work in here? I work in here. I, I drive them in and out. And in wintertime, this is a really tough to keep clean. Is this, uh, I bet the suit's hard to keep clean. Do you work in that uh, suit all? Well, sometimes, but my friends and I, we uh, have a car club. Yeah. And we wear our tuxedos, and we go around and visit each other's garages. And it's part of the spirit of living in the city. And, and we have the opportunity maybe to go to one of these other garages? You have another nice one? A friend of mine has a garage that's, uh, we call it the Garage Mahal. The Garage Mahal. <laughs> Very nice, as you'll see. Would you like to go? Oh, I'd love to. Can we, can we drive one of these, though? Pick your pick. White Roadster, Red Coupe. Ooh, that, that is a tough call. I say Red Coupe. Red it is. Gosh, Jerry, I feel so underdressed. <laughs> well, we'll get you some new clothes later. <laughs> I clean up pretty nice. Oh, good. It was absolutely beautiful weather in Winnipeg for our drive over to Jerry's friend, but nothing could have prepared me for what I was about to see. Oh, announcing us. Well, we're here, Dennis. <laughs> well, that kind of looks like a garage door. Yeah, but it hides what's inside. I think Dave is waiting for us. We'll go ahead and go in. Okay. Holy mackerel. This is amazing. David, are you here? Now you see why we call this the Garage Mahal, it Dennis. It is indeed the Garage Mahal. Oh, and now I definitely feel underdressed. <laughs> Here's the man who's uh, did this, David Pritchard, Dennis Gage, and my classic nice car. Nice to meet you, David. Pleased to meet you. Wow. Welcome. All I can say is, wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is something else. I mean, I love the environment, but the collection is killer, too. I'm, I'm a big fan of bikes, and that is the Holy Grail right there, the, the Vincent Black Shadow. Yeah, 1952. Uh, the world's fastest standard bike at the time, 125 miles an hour. That was one quick bike in 52. And next to it, about a 1970 Triumph Tiger. Tiger, 650 Tiger, single carb. Yeah, it's a Bonneville yeah. with only one carburetor and half the headaches. <laughs> Actually, idle smooth, yeah. Yeah, and uh, BSA, that's uh, what, a Rocket 3? Rocket 3, 1969, first year. They made them till 71 until BSA closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you seem to be fond of Norton's. Love the Nortons, yes. This Can't have a, too many. This is the, the, the commando battalion here? <laughs> commando <laughs> battalion, yeah. This is the uh, 73 Interstate. It's my road bike. Use that for longer distances. This is a 69 Fastback. I love the pre-70 models. 
Uh, this is a 69S with the high pipes on the uh, left side. But boy, this, this Norton, I've never seen this one here at all. Uh, that's a 1990 uh, Norton F1. It's a street version of the Formula One race bike. Uh, Norton won the uh, British uh, Grand Prix in 1989. It looks like a rocket. It is very fast. <laughs> <laughs> I've never driven it yet. Wow. So, uh, it is beautiful. And back in the back, we have an, an AJS? 1952 uh, 500 single. Wow, that's a big single. Big single, Well, yes. I love what you've done with all your, your, your collectibles and all your automobilia here. You've, yes. you've displayed them so nicely. Well, my wife said, get them out of the house. So I had, <laughs> a, had to find a place to put them. And it uh, gives a little street look uh, for the bikes, the natural yeah. environment. The yeah. toy shop, that's the right. The toy shop, yeah. The cigar shop. And it, Oh, and the British pub. You've got, you must have a pub. <laughs> oh, here's a pub. Well, I'll see you guys later. I'm going in here. <laughs> All right, Jerry. We'll, we'll pick you up in a while. Though. Leave some for us, though. And now for the Jag side of things. An SS100, Jaguar SS100. Uh, what, 1938? 1938. The uh, this winner of the RAC rally in England in 1938. Was actually factory, a factory? Factory no? rally car. My goodness. Uh, one of three factory rally cars, yes. And there weren't many of those built to begin with. No, they built about 300 cars. Uh, there's about 190 known in the club today. Um, it's the classic pre-war British oh, sports car, absolutely. what everybody thinks of. And it's fast too. And next to it looks like a very early 120. Uh, this is an aluminum body, um, 240 made uh, in aluminum, full aluminum body. That was a 10-year project restoring that. Oh, but nicely done. Thank uh, you. Is that, uh, what do they call it? Periwinkle blue? Uh, or? This is pastel blue. Oh, pastel, pastel blue, blue, yes. Now, uh, this is a pretty late model E-Type. 1974, uh, made in June of 74, one of the late models. Um, I've had this since 1976. It's all original, unrestored. Well, you seem to like kind of unique cars. You seem to like convertibles. Uh, definitely has to. The top doesn't go down. I you're, don't want You're not it. interested. No. Well, how about now? Here's a, an XJS. This, what's significant about this car? Uh, it's a 1990. I drive it to work. Oh, <laughs> You've got to have a drive. Absolutely. <laughs> and why not a Jaguar? Yes. Very early E-Type. Uh, 1961, uh, first year. This is an outside bonnet lock. Uh, the first 500 cars uh, were outside bonnet locks. Um, very collectible until he stopped production and retooled. That would have been a flat floor car? Flat floor, welded in louvers. Many, many differences than the uh, rest of the cars. Well, an incredible collection, but what an environment. What, uh, <laughs> what possessed you to do this? Well, it was Jerry, actually. Uh, uh, his fault, huh? It was his fault, yeah. He says, I needed a garage. I used to have them all in storage under covers. I never got to see them. So I wanted to be able to sit down and have a drink in a pub and look at them. Life is good. <laughs> and talking about that drink in the pub, what well, do you say? Come and I'll show you the British beer. All right. <laughs>